Hey YouTube, Carlos here again. In this video, I'm going to be replacing this 7.5 horsepower Mercury outboard, which is broken beyond repair, with a lawnmower engine so that I can mount it on my 12 foot V haul and go out to the Everglades and hopefully catch some fish. So, here we go. Okay, so really all I did was remove these six screws right here, and then uh, one, two electrical ground screws, another support screw over here, uh, the choke cable and this gas line right here and then the whole engine block just came right off okay so i'm on my way to a small engine service shop uh because i found the 6.75 horsepower briggs and stratton engine for some reason it's not working properly but uh i'm gonna try to fix it it's a pretty good price too it's 20 dollars so we'll see how that goes i'm gonna go pick it up right now Okay, so before we proceed, I just want to take note that this engine is not 6.75 horsepower. Instead, it has 6.75 foot-pounds of torque. Now, Briggs and Stratton used to drive their horsepower ratings at 3,600 RPM, uh, even though the max RPM of this, this particular engine is 3,100 according to the spec sheets. Uh, but in 2008, Briggs and Stratton stopped using horsepower because of some lawsuits. However, for comparison, at 3600 RPM, this engine would be rated at 4 horsepower, although its uh, maximum power output would actually be slightly under that. Okay, so the first thing I noticed when I tried to pull the cord was that it was quite hard to pull, and uh, it might be some rust in the flywheel or something got stuck inside. So we're going to take this apart and see, see how the flywheel looks first. Okay, so right off the bat, we found the first one of our problems. The reason why this flywheel is so stiff is because this brake right here is always engaged uh, because the stop cable is missing from this mower. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, this cable right here from the front wheel drive and make it into a stop cable. Okay guys, so I cleaned out the carburetor, replaced some gaskets, and I put fresh oil in the oil tank, but still for some reason it's not starting. So what I'm going to do is use starter fluid. Here we go. So for like a quarter of a second, you could hear something. Uh, we'll try it again. Okay, so a few days ago, I ran into the most significant challenge of this project so far. Basically, the screw, the bolt that attaches the blade adapter to the shaft of the mower was on so tight that no matter what I did, it wouldn't budge. So, I was forced to have to cut off a little piece of this bolt so that it could have a more grippable shape. And then, after soaking it for a whole day, letting it marinate in this magnetic lubricant, it came right off with some pressure pliers. Okay, so this is the Mercury outboard engine. I'm going to try to remove this piece right here, which fits the axle of the propeller perfectly. So we can attach this piece to the shaft of the lawnmower engine. Okay, so I'm going to use this speed out drill bit to remove these six screws right here that have been stripped.
Okay guys, so finally, I brought this to my friend Jim, my friend and neighbor Jim, and uh, with some power metal cutting tools, this, uh, what is this called? That's an industrial heavy steel saw. With this industrial In steel saw? And this, what is that? That's an angle a grinder. grinder. An angle grinder, we were able to cut this. This isn't titanium, right? You said it was steel? It's heavy steel. Heavy steel, but it was really hard. I tried for like 15 minutes to cut it with my uh, fret saw, and it didn't even make a dent. But we were finally able to cut it off. So I'm gonna mount this on the shaft of the mower and then put it in the, this is gonna attach, the bottom part is gonna attach to the drive shaft of the propeller. So thank you very much, Jim. Okay. So I'm here in this very high tech machine shop uh, that a friend of mine owns. And we have a lathe, a mill, and hopefully we're gonna be able to have enough tools. Well, we definitely 100% have enough tools to do what we want. And we have a welder out back over there. So uh, let's, let's start doing some work. Continuing the process of making the metal bit perfectly round. So the consensus was that we're going to drill out a hole, the diameter of this metal bit right here, so that when we insert it and weld it in, we can have more surface area of welded holding this bit because this bit is pretty thin. So this little thing is measuring how centered the piece is. We're at 0.616, we're trying to get to 0.625. Let the welding begin! This is an avocado tree with uh, three different avocados growing from it. Uh, don't tell me how, but certain species were impregnated into the main trunk and now they have avocados all, all year round. Pretty amazing, huh? So there was a slight problem when we were welding, uh, apparently when we were heating the bronze, the very thin uh, layer of steel um, started to melt, so we had to stop the welding and uh, now we're going to cut it off, clean it some and then uh, use a different welding technique. New problem, new day. Today I'm going to figure out how to divert the flow of water from the cooling system so that it doesn't um, accumulate around the propeller shaft and cause rust. So I hooked up this drill and this bucket of water so I can, it fills the uh, propeller, the water pump intake. And we're gonna observe where the water flows so we can properly divert it. So I'm going to go ahead and start the motor. Huh, that's interesting. I didn't really see any... Uh, any water spouting out from the water pump down there. So I'm guessing that it is a problem that we don't really need to solve. Uh, I'm not going to try to divert it because I don't see any water coming out.
Okay, looking back, I've realized I've been overly concerned for filming uh, scattered in random details. So I want to take a moment to look at the big picture and uh, just sort of admire the progress we've done so far. First of all, you may recall this, the stop mechanism, uh, the first thing we worked on in this project. Well now, it's connected to the kill switch. And the purpose of the kill switch is, well, to be able to stop the engine at uh, the boater's convenience and not at the boat's convenience. So as you can see, the kill switch is pretty simple. Uh, you just pull, lock, and then you're ready to start the engine. And to engage the brake, you just pull the bolt out. Okay, so now the engine is supported by two main supports. This uh, big bulky platform to which the engine is tethered by these two cables right here. And the second support is uh, this block of wood right here. Now this screw that you see right here, that was just added uh, so that the engine doesn't spin on its axis. But to uh, understand the throttle mechanism this is a throttle right here when you open the throttle uh, this cable is pulled the tension being maintained by the spring right here and uh, when I open the throttle giving it gas this uh, nylon fishing line is pulled and this line is connected to the governor spring right here so for those of you unfamiliar with governor systems a governor is a negative feedback loop which originates as a gadget deep within the engine block and that works through centrifugal force. This gadget is linked to the governor arm such that the faster the engine spins, the more force the governor arm exerts towards the top of the screen to close the throttle, starving the engine of fuel. The governor arm would succeed in shutting off the engine if it weren't for the governor spring, whose tension maintains a constant tug of war against the arm. It's arm versus spring. In lawn mowers, the governor system is needed because if, say, you enter a patch of tall, dense grass, the immediate effect is that the engine will slow down. The gadget will detect this and the arm will still try to shut off the engine, but with less of a force, giving an advantage to the spring, which opens up the throttle slightly, compensating for the tall grass. Obviously, we're not cutting grass anymore, so the governor system is unnecessary. Instead of removing it and risking damag damaging the motor, however, I decided to control the speed of the engine by varying the tension of the spring. When I pull the fishing line, when I pull on the fishing line, the tug of war equilibrium favors an open throttle and vice versa. So the engine runs, but uh, at those low RPMs, it's stalling quite a bit. So if that's a problem now, that means it's going to be a big problem when it's under load in the water. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I adjusted the tension in the fishing line by uh, screwing this uh, loop uh, deeper into the wood. And the second thing I'm going to do is add an idle pin so that the choke, I mean the throttle, doesn't close beyond a certain point. There's an idle screw right there, and this is the new minimum throttle uh, setting. Let's see if we notice any difference.
Felicidades, Dani. Está perfecto, Nati. Está aprendiendo el bote. Ven a ti.